serving. A very important skill for young kids because it's in their total control. In fact, they'll get better at this, better than any other skill, because it's a closed motor program, all done by myself. Without the ball, the serve looks like this. You have a ready position where your hands are ready to go. You place the ball, and then you swing. Looking straight on, it looks like this. Ready, place, and then swing. This is how we do it with a ball. Ready, place, and swing. And then run into your area of defense. Here we see the classic American favorite, the overhead tennis style serve. Ready, place, and swing. And the area, the kids run into the area of defense. You can see a rigid, consistent contact point is one of the other key secrets. The way we do that is to hit it off a tight hand or a fist, and the wrist never gives. A rigid and consistent contact point is what those kids need to get the ball over the net. Between that and the torque that they're looking for, we'll get a great serve. Let's look at the overhead serve in a different way, the way the Asians do it, called the roundhouse. The roundhouse serve is a serve many young kids can do when they do it underhanded, which is really simple. We want to do the contact above the shoulder, ready, place, swing, done left-handed, it would look ready, place, and swing. Let's take a look at the kids and check for understanding and see how they do here. If you'd show us, please. Ready, place, and swing. All right, let's get a ball and see if we can do it. Ready, place, and swing. The roundhouse serve. This torque of the roundhouse is so important that even a little tiny player like me can make the team. Yay! Let's watch the kids do it in full power. Excellent job. Maybe one of the favorite serves for the kids is the jump serve. Done without the ball, you put the ball in either hand, throw the ball up, jump, and swing. Same thing as the spike, open the door and slam the door. Let's watch the kids do it. With the ball, the jump serve looks like this. The player sets the ball to herself, jumps, and swings. This is sometimes called the spike serve for the same reason, because they're setting themselves and spiking the ball from deep over the net. Some really nice hits. The ball, of course, the positive error is to clear the net out of bounds long, and the last choice is to hit into the net. Good job, ladies. The forearm pass, perhaps the most important thing for serve reception, looks like this straight on. You have a stable, consistent platform. You create one with your arms, and your back is slightly bent. From the side, you would look ready and pass, turning your platform to get the ball to go to the setter. Let's take a look at the kids do this in action with three balls in motion, so there's lots of learning going on. You can see the way the player's ready position, turn the ball to the target, which is the setter. Ideal pass here will stay off the net rather than go over the net if they make a mistake so that their team can play it. But young kids are often taught to pass the ball back and forth, and therefore they learn to pass the ball back to the server who happens to be on the other side of the net. Here, like everything we're doing, the ball's going over the net so that the ball has to have some speed taken off of it to stay on their side of the net. The targets, as you can see, are to the right of center, which is where we want the pass to be for most six-on-six -six games. Now the ladies are going to back up a step or two because they've been warming up or because they're actually able to serve. The version you first saw could be done by really young kids, and now the serves are going to be coming in a little bit harder and flatter. And at some point in time, we would actually be serving this ball from behind the end line. But the drill doesn't change at all. In fact, from here, we would now say to the players, rotate, and the players would switch positions and repeat the same drill from a new position. Scoring variations here can be how many in a row, how many out of 10, 
how many uh, one group can get the first to be first to ten and beat the other two groups. Like every drill, at some point in time we want to score, including cooperation scoring or what we call transition scoring. Transition scoring would be where the player serves or throws four easy ones and then changes it to hard ones attempting to beat the passer after working with the passer. The target should be catching the ball like an overhead pass. That works on their overhead pass technique, getting to the ball for all players. Another variation of this drill is called concentration passing. The rule is this. I can't touch you, I can't touch the ball, but I can do anything else I want to bugger. This is how it looks. She needs to concentrate on the ball and still pass the same drill that we've been doing around and around. I got her on that one really good. And once the kids get over it, that was a sweet pass. Good job by you. Maybe the kids' favorite drill around the world is called Monarch of the Court or Winners Stay On. Let's take a look at this where the ball is served and the winner stays on. Here are the kids in action. The ball served. They play a normal game of three on three or four on four. And whoever wins, in this case the far side, they stay on and the ball is served by the team after one 1,000 weight. That keeps the pace going. The team on the near side, great rally going on, great hustle. This is how they learn. Ball is played over the net. The near side wins, dashes under, one 1,000, two, and then they serve even if the other team isn't ready. The winners here win again, one 1,000, two. Here's the ball, go. I think one of the most important things is that a coach has a philosophy as to why they're out here. It may even need, even need to be written. Um, but if you've got a philosophy that says, I'm not here to have fun and play everybody, then that's what your focus should be on. Uh, we see the greatest success at the Olympic level as well as at the youth level come when coaches are working on performance over the outcome. Rather than being focused on the final score, they work on every kid's individual performance and pay attention to that kind of stuff. Yeah, we, we say that the net is gold and the ball is silver, the lines are bronze, and so you want to use the net from start to finish with the ball. A team that might do stretching and running and things without the ball and net are doing that for 10 to 15 minutes every practice. You're picking up that every day and you might even pick up a free practice a week just because you're using the ball from start to finish. So it's really important to start using the net when you walk in the gym start to finish. When we start in the beginning, we'll play short court games for little kids and we play those even with the high level teams to warm up with. The idea is that we want to be playing because play is how you learn. And the more that the action is game-like, the better you're going to be. Game-like is the key word that you might want to remember a lot because if you're doing things that are like the game, you're going to probably be transferring the knowledge from your drill or your practice into the game. I think that it's really important to have uh, what we call Socratic coaching. You haven't seen me on the tape stopping the kids playing much. But what I would be doing as their coach now would be pulling them aside one-on-one -on -one and asking them questions or pulling the whole group together. In fact, we have a rule that says, ask, put the name last. I may see a teachable moment. I pull everybody together because I want to talk to Bethany. I used to say, Bethany, and then I'd ask the question. And now I ask the question, look around the group, and then say, Bethany? And that difference means that everybody's tuned in to what the question is rather than cutting out. So that's important. You should be playing this co-ed. If you play co-ed, the girls benefit from the, the speed of the guys that is usually more powerful, and it helps them become better players. Motor skill research says speed first, accuracy second. So we're always saying, hit the ball hard, swing your arm fast. That's a great hit, even though it goes and hits the wall ball, because they're going to learn accuracy later. Uh, they often say, you know, I hit the ball as hard as I could, I found the court later. That's what all the great hitters learned when they were young. And the same thing happens in golf. Tiger Woods said, I hit the ball as hard as I could, I found the fairway later. So we like hustle. That, if somebody asks me what my opening line is before a match to the kids, it's often, I don't care if we win or lose, but nobody should out hustle us. So if you can create a team that really hustles, they're gonna have fun even if they lose on the scoreboard, they're winning because you're on their side.